Um, okay, then uh, they'd go for it. Okay, so uh, I'm a grad student. I'm a third year PhD student with Michael. Um, I'm working mostly on building digital humans. Um, so simple and its extensions, uh, upgrades. Uh, prior to that, uh, um, I, I did my bachelor's in robotics at the University of Liverpool in the UK. And I did an MSc in computer science at the University of Manchester and an MSc in mathematics at the Imperial College London. And I joined first Michael's department as a research engineer. And I took the simple bug and I couldn't leave. Um, and now I'm working on um, uh, simple and extensions. And today I'm going to talk about the problems in simple and fixing them, how we fix them with, with STAR. So um, simple is just, it's been like, it's, a, it's an inspiring um, piece of academic work. As we've seen this, um, in this workshop, um, it just built a community. It's one of the few academic endeavors that build a community um, um, around it. And the key, one of the key advantages of simple is that it's built to be compatible with the gaming and animation industry standards. So all the cool work that we've seen with Microsoft and Joachim Tesh showed us in AR and VR. These are only possible because of the simple formulation. And simple is basically, it's based on linear blend skinning, which is the animation and gaming uh, industry standard for modeling rigged characters. And linear blend skinning has a very widely known mode of failure, which is what Michael talked about earlier, which is the loss of mesh volume around the joints, as you can see here on the left-hand side. Uh, for the uh, green character on the left-hand side. And the key innovation behind Simple was to learn corrective blend shapes um, that are basically corrective offsets that are added to the mesh, such that which is when it's posed, um, it looks realistic. And th this is the key innovation of, of Simple, that it's used 3D scans of real humans to learn how to deform the mesh in a realistic manner. And, and and this is the function, this corrective offset regressor function is what we're going to look at closely next. So this function basically takes, uh, it's a very simple linear function. It maps the, uh, the corrective offsets for each vertex are regressed from the elements of the part rotation matrices of each joint in the kinematic tree. What you're looking here at, at the right is basically the L2 norm. We're looking at the, uh, the, uh, the, the magnitude or of the corrective offsets added, uh, added to the mesh. These are the predicted corrective blend shapes. And on the left here, we're looking at the uh, joints, the rotation, the, the, the joints that, uh, what are the joints doing, the underlying rig it's doing. And each vertex in the simple mesh is dependent, is regressed, the corrective offsets are regressed from the element of the part rotation matrices of all the joints. So for each vertex, I need to have 207 numbers. Those 207 numbers uh, are basically 23 joints. Each joint is represented with a three by three matrix. So this is nine numbers. So 23 by nine numbers to regress the corrective offsets. And already we can start to see very strange things happening here. First of all, uh, we know that by, by default, human pose deformations are local in nature. So I, moving an elbow, if I move my elbow, it does not affect my, the other part of my body. But here we look here, like here's someone is touching their face with their left arm. And you can see that simple is predicting corrective offsets. These are shown as yellow bumps on, on both elbows. So just although like only a single elbow is moving, and th this is this just will just set the stage for many of the problems like this formulation um, um, uh, um, uh, caused in simple and its further applications. Uh, by the way, I like my talks to be very interactive. So if, if there's anything not clear, you just stop me right away and we can discuss, um, we can explain things further. But all here, what I would like you to know that each vertex is dependent on the state of the full kinematic tree and that simple learned uh, uh, false long range spurious correlations that bending one elbow results in a bulge in the other elbow. And the simple formulation has been very influential. So we use it in many subsequent products. So it's, it has been used in hands, it has been used, we've used it in simple X. 
and we've used it in Flame as well. So um, it's just not just an, uh, multiple models are based on this uh, blueprint. So what are the problems of simple? These problems we've uh, came, arise as a form of, uh, from our, our personal use of the model in-house and perceiving system and feedback that we've got from industry. So one of the biggest shortcomings of the simple representation is that that function that I showed you earlier regressed the corrective offsets just from the, using the pose as, the, as, as, as an input. But we know that a high BMI subject and a low BMI subject doing the same exact same pose, they would have different deformations from the effect of gravity on the fat and so on. As we can see here, so on the top I'm showing you is a ground truth registration. A registration, if you can think about it as a, Michael talked about it earlier, it's a raw type of data of someone uh, of two female subjects kneeling down. And you see that on the female subject, we're seeing a lot more deformations on the thigh and the tummy uh, and the chest area compared to the lower BMI subject. But for simple, it only uses the pose information as the, uh, as the input. And this is the first limitation. The second limitation, which we briefly touched upon is the fact that the model learned false spheres long range correlation. And here, what I'm showing you on the, on the left-hand side is a simple model where we just move the single joint, which is the left elbow. And we're, we're looking at the L2 norm of this predicted pose deformation. So what are the, which parts of the mesh we're predicting uh, corrective offsets on? And you can see here that although like intuitively just moving the left elbow should not have any influence on the right elbow, but it does. Um, um, and um, to just give you more intuition of how that looks like. So here we're having a runner, thanks actually to Nareen Mahmoud for giving us this uh, example. So we're having here a runner that's warming up and notice that he's warming, moving just one elbow, but the other elbow is bulging. And in every single example, if you've noticed carefully, uh, that we've seen today, whenever we have someone bending their elbow, you see like a, 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 a bad deformation on the other elbow. And this is very problematic for artists, animators. And it's, it's just, again, this boils, boils down back to that simple regresses the corrective offices for every vertex by all the joints in the model kinematic tree. The second thing is the biased female chest shape. So what do we mean by that? So on the right, here, the left here I'm showing you is a registration of a female subject and the simple fit to that registration. And simple is biased to have a chest shape, female chest shape of a sports bra. And this goes back to you too, because simple shape space, the female shape space was trained only on the Caesar data set that Michael talked about earlier. And the female Caesar data set subjects were all wearing a sports bra. This is very problematic for people working with, you know, uh, trying to do uh, clothing apparel. So if I want to model um, uh, like a more natural uh, 3D geometry for the female chest shape, this will be very hard with the simple, um, with the Caesar data set only. So our goal basically was to address these problems. These are problems that just keeps coming up, non-local deformations. So we have just basically uh, this regression from all the joints to all the vertices and the bias female shape and the deformation of the body only depends only on the body pose. And this sets the stage nicely to introduce our ECCV 2020 work, which was a joint collaboration between uh, myself, Timo Bolkert and Michael Black, which is uh, introduced STARS, stands for Sports Strain Articulated Human Body Regressor. And our, when we were building STAR, we were basically had clearly defined design principles that we had to meet, which, had, which was, it has to be a drop-in replacement for simple. So any application that we've seen today that uses simple should swap STAR for simple without any uh, more um, uh, uh, software, like it, it has to be done like seamlessly. So the same pose and shape parameterization that everyone uses is same behavior input outputs. It has to be a drop-in replacement for simple, compatible with game engines to creative people like uh, what we've seen from jo Joachim today and Noreen and Microsoft should be able to use the model. And we would like to have sparse and local pose deformations. So a single joint should not have such a long range effect on the mesh. 
And equally important to those three points, we would like to have that the model generalizes better, than, at least as to be as good as simple when trained on the same training. So those were the design, like design criteria we were building out of. And our key idea with STAR is that each joint, like we know intuitively speaking, that each joint movement is, uh, um, the deformation caused by each joint movement are sparse and spatially local in nature. So what we've done is we, did, we factorized this fully connected layer that I talked about earlier that regresses the joints from all the joints to all the vertices to, in, to into a joint-based post-corrected blend shape function. So for each joint, we're predicting a, uh, 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 post-corrective deformations that are only influencing a sparse set of the mesh vertices. So what we're looking at here in the middle is a muscle man. We, this is a human subject that we refer to as muscle man 2020. And um, the arrows that are uh, uh, like flaring out from that subject are, are visualizes the deformations predicted for each joint in the body. Um, and uh, the color coding basically gray, uh, the silver gray uh, means zero. So the joint has no influence whatsoever on those vertices. It's just, it's predicting zero. And the non-zero parts are the, areas of the mesh that are influenced by the joint movement. And it makes sense. So the subject here is just moving mostly their elbow. So most of the yellow is on the elbows. So this is where we're predicting most of the deformations part, like the neck, the neck is barely moving and the rest of the body. But how do we do that? How do we, how did we, so this is our, our key contribution is basically being able to factorize the deformations into joint based post corrective deformation, blend shape functions. So our key idea was that we need to learn uh, for each joint, a joint activation function. This joint activation function defines the set of vertices that should be influenced by that joint movement. And this is learned, this is learned during the training of STAR. So on the left here, I'm going to show you the activations, the activation function that we learned for, um, for the size of STAR, uh, the left thigh as training progresses. And you can see that this function is basically learning, like uh, is basically zooming in on that joint. And what, what this shows us that um, the thigh movement will only influence those vertices uh, that are not non-gray non and similarly for the elbow as well. And what you're seeing here is the, how this joint activation function evolves over time. Are there any questions? Like, should I press on? Yeah, so actually they're in the chat. Somebody was mentioning, hi, I'm wondering why the deformations are not local. Are the vertices only influenced by no more than four body parts? This is probably about the simple model itself. Right, so this is, so the, the, the four body parts is, you're probably referring to the skinning weight. So simple is a four bone skinning weight. So um, um, the, so in, in simple, like the skin, like the, how the skinning, is defined is that each vertex is associated to four maximum four joints. But the post corrective blend shape function is basically a fully connected layer like function. So it takes for every vertex, uh, it regresses the corrective offsets from all, um, all, all, uh, all, all, the, all, all, the, all, all the post parameters of all the joints to all the vertices. It's a fully connected layer. And if I may also add to that, the blend weights are also actually, the issue is they might, they are influenced by only uh, four joints. The, the, the vertices are influenced by only four joints, but it's not localized because we were depending on the data and the quality of data was sort of informing how, how the blend weights are, are uh, learned. And we also wanted to remain comparable to earlier work, which was Scape and Blendscape, which didn't do this kind of limited like localization. So those were some some of the reasons behind <laughs> doing all of this. Yeah, well, and, we did uh, we did in in the original uh, simple paper have a sparse version of the pose correctives uh, by forcing this uh, to limit the number of joints that could influence them, and we found it reduced the quality of the model and so that's why we didn't do it. We reported it in the paper though, that a sparse version made things worse so we didn't do it. Yeah, 
like uh, I might talk about that in the end if you like like why like why I think like this didn't work um but one thing is uh, like the main reason simple learns these long range spears correlations is because in that training data of simple you had a lot of people doing symmetric poses so they're bending the left and the right elbow at the same time as well so the the model is, is it's basically it's learning correlations from the data so if i see all the time people doing symmetric poses we're going to learn um, that you know that the left and the right elbow just correlates at the, all the time which wasn't the case and the idea of star was to on the same training data that we are imposing priors on how to factorize that function that it only should influence only a sparse set of the model vertices okay so um just like going back so um just to recap quickly so i told you that we're going to factorize the post corrective blend shape into a, a set of functions and each post each joint based function is influencing a sparse set of the mesh vertices and for uh we, we were learning uh which mesh vertices should be influenced by that joint movement by using by learning these masks during training and basically the joint post corrective blend shape function now it takes again the uh the joint angle the joint uh, here I'm, I'm showing it's for the elbow as shown in green and it's directly neighboring joints and we're representing the rotations here notice as unit quaternions so this is a shift from the rodriguez representation that has was being used by simple so instead of nine numbers we're using four numbers it's a much more compact representation compared to the rodriguez representation and we're predicting a dense corrective offsets so from that we're predicting offsets for the whole mesh and then we're multiplying that with the hadamard product of this joint activation function that we learned from the previous uh, slide and this basically limits the set of vertices that are influenced by that joint movement so this is a combination of things and there um th there are two things i want to point out here so simple had michael pointed out it has a lot of blend shapes and you heard people like Joachim complain about the number of blend shapes of simple that it's uh you cannot have a crowd uh with many simple models um and uh so instead of 207 numbers we're having four uh we're having uh um, 92 numbers this is four multiplied by uh 23 and so, and this is this this more compact representation is due to the shift from rodriguez to unit quaternions and the other thing is that we're using because we're limiting the effect of each joint on the full mesh uh we, we were ending up with substantially fewer parameters uh, um, because it's mostly sparse each each of those functions are mostly sparse and this is what i'm going to um, talk about next so here i'm looking looking at the number of parameters of simple and star compared side by side and star has roughly like around 20 percent of the parameters of simple and this is mostly because of the uh, sparse, uh, there are two things here, the use of the unit quaternions instead of Rodriguez rotations. And the second thing is of the sparse, the sparsification of those functions. Sorry, I don't understand the sparsification part. Like it's basically meaning if you go back the joint activation, if you're only updating the uh, pose blend shapes for like the elbow only do that reach, like how did you get the joint activation? But like, it's how do you figure the region of the joint activation? Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a very good question that I didn't talk about because I thought that would be too long for twenty minutes. But uh, I will, since you brought it up, I will talk about it. So it's basically this joint activation function is uh, you have six uh, minutes. So plan your time accordingly. You can do it offline. I could, yeah. Question later. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, okay, I'll, yeah. So I I thought like Michael will do that. So that's why I skipped like that part. But uh, we we'll talk about it later. Thanks, Michael. Uh, and here I'm looking, we're re revisiting the failure cases and we're looking back at them and we're looking at simple and star. The deformation of simple and star were removed the elbow. Um, and you can see here for star, like gray here, this silver is basically zero. Like there's no, like the, the deformation predicted for the elbow is on the elbow. And here's the runner runner. And thanks to Noreen again for giving us this example. So, 
you're bending an elbow like in start like there's no effect because it's just it's mostly sparse and for simple you can see like the long range deformation one thing i didn't uh, okay i will not talk about it because i only have six minutes and second thing is the pose deformation so we want to condition on body shape right so uh body deformations should be both body pose and body shape and since simple depends only on body pose we want to extend it to be to extend the, this formulation of the post corrective blend shapes to be based on body shape. So what we do is we notice that there is a very strong correlation and it's a very high correlation between the second principal component and the subject BMI. So we have this data set uh, where we had the subjects BMIs and we looked at the second PCA. So Michael talked about sh shape spaces that are PCA based and uh, uh, and there's a very high correlation between that. So we condition as well this post-corrective blend shape function on the second PCA component. And this is done by simply concatenating the second PCA with the unit quaternion feature. And uh, additionally here, we like we just like uh, Caesar data set is quite limited. It doesn't have a lot of high BMI subjects. So Michael just walked into my office one day and told me, hey, here is more 10,000 subjects. Give me the world best model. Uh, so thanks, Michael. So now we have the size USA data set, which has 10,000 uh, subjects, high BMI, low BMI. Uh, it has a lot more shape variability. But what mostly most interesting about the, this data set is that the size USA compared to Caesar, the female chest shape were wearing traditional bra. They were not wearing a sports bra. So uh, trading on this data set allows us to capture more the geometry better which is good for like applications like clothing and so on. And here, like I'm showing an example of a fitting of the same subject that I showed you earlier, both simple for both simple and star. And yeah. So how do you evaluate these models? So now, like we, I told you, like we have three problems and three ways to, like we made three changes to address them. So in order to evaluate our models, we took, we evaluated in two data sets. The first is the 3D body text data set that was captured uh, from Saint Etel. So this is from the University of Luxembourg, which has uh, and uh, the Dyna data set. So the Dyna data set is the data set that was used in the original simple paper. Uh, so we use 3D body text because it offers just a large number of body shapes that are like the original Dyna data set that we used. We had two males and four females. We had for 3D body text. This is just a lot more subjects. We had 200 male and 200 females each doing two poses. So this data had just a lot more body shapes. And uh, the, the, I'd like to emphasize that 3D body, both data sets are publicly available. So if you want to get them, uh, they're publicly available. Uh, you can request just like we did the 3D body text data uh, and the Dyna data is already publicly available. So uh, they, we, we made sure we evaluate on uh, publicly available data set. So, those are raw scans. So we register those raw scans to our templates. Okay, so Michael talked about why we need to do this registration step. And here I'm showing you what like a registration looks like. Um, so those are registrations from the 3D body text data sets uh, when we fitted them to our template mesh. Is the face badly registered because they blurred it? No, or no, so it's, not, it's not badly. I knew that you'd say that. So. Uh, so actually in 3D body text, they are defaced. So, so I regularized for that. This is by the way, like a typical day in my PhD, like Michael, like pointing things out like that. So this is awesome. Uh, yeah, so here uh, we're showing like it's a tight fit. So this high, high frequency interleaving that Michael talked about, but once we have this fits to our template, because the simple and star topology is the same, we're able to basically fit using a standard vertex to vertex objective that Michael talked about. And here is the evaluation fits. So we uh, evaluate it uh, simple. Um, it's a very busy graph, but what I would like you to focus on is first the uh, simple, the dashed black line and the, and, the, and, the, and the solid red line, the dashed black line and the solid red line, this shows that when simple and star are trained on the exact same data, star uniformly uh, generalizes better. 
But what this curve says is that we first train simple against on Caesar, and this is shown as the uh, solid black line, and st uh, star without this, not beta two means without the second PCA component. So it's just using pose information trained on Caesar, and star still generalizes better. And then we added uh, the black the, uh, the black dotted line and the blue dotted line are Caesar and size USA. So both models trained on Caesar and size USA. Star without the shape information and star generalizes better. And just adding shape helps the model as well generalizes better. And we would like to emphasize this is a large, I think this is like uh, simple was originally evaluated on two male and four females. Uh, but because of the 3D body text data sets, we have 400 additional registrations to evaluate. So this is uh, like a, a significantly bigger data set uh, compared to uh, evaluation data set compared to the simple data set. So the key takeaway here is SARS analyzes better. So to wrap up, simple has 207 post-corrective blend shapes. Star has only 93. This is because of the use of the unit quaternions. Simple was trained on 5,000. Star was trained on 15,000. Simple has long range spurious correlations, but star has sparse spatially local deformations. And what I didn't point out as well that star has sparse gradients. So if you take, and I didn't talk about this because I don't have time, but because of the, this, uh, the dependency of all the vertices and all the joints and simple, you get dense gradients. So the gradient between any vertex and all the joints is always it's a dense matrix. This is not the case for star. I didn't talk about this early, uh, in this talk, so I didn't have time. So finally, I'd like to thank all of my lovely collaborators uh, for all the fruitful discussions and the code and uh, insights. So um, uh, thank you all. Uh, and that's it. And I would like to uh, pause here for questions. I apologize if the talk was slightly incoherent. It's midnight here in Germany. So it is midnight. And it's uh, the end of it. I have to ask you one question. There was also another problem that you didn't mention was simple that many people are familiar with, and it's the belly bulge. <laughs> have you gotten rid of the belly bulge? Yes. So this is this went away from. I actually had it in the slides and removed it because of. Uh, so Fantastic. the belly bulge. This is the first thing that Gerard told me. Like uh, when I joined, like, did you see this belly bulge? So it's basically if you take simple and you raise the, the thighs it just starts to become very pregnant. It has this huge belly bulge. And this comes from the post-corrective blend shape learning. So we had very like high BMI, very, very high BMI subjects and very, uh, and the post-corrective blend shapes because they depend on posts, so they just explain like this, like fat, like- I think, um, it, I think it was because most of the bent, the angle between the, the thigh and the torso mostly came from people bending over and gravity would affect the stomach. It came, very few of them came from people pulling, like squatting or something. So, so yeah, we didn't actually have people sitting down that kind yeah, of a pose, yeah. you know, that's essentially where, when you will see that the belly is straight, but even without a high BMI subject, you will see that yeah. when you bend forward, your belly bulges forward. And that's what the simple model had learned. And anytime, even when people were raising the leg in the model, the belly would, move forward so that also actually addresses what Sergi was asking so I addressed the question in the chat already which is similar to this this issue I I do also have one question Michael are you done with the yeah question I just wanted to talk to you uh, Ahmed about your sort of intuition about how the as the populations keep changing the population size essentially is constantly changing and also for different kinds different regions, Will we need to retrain uh, the the model specifically? So for the for the pose correctives based on the shape, do we need to keep on retraining that? And what um, kinds of big differences do so we if see? You, if you end up, if you want to train like so, like these pose corrective blend shapes, how we train them, they're minimizing the mean absolute error of the training data, and this training data is. For simple, has high BMI, low BMI, people who are ripped athletes, people who are not speech D students, maybe. Uh, so what we learn essentially from this data set is a generic set of post blend shapes that addresses the shortcomings of LBS, but they smooth out a lot of the deformations of an athlete, for example. 
So someone who's, uh, if you are looking to build, they're, they're basically, it's what the mental image I have in my mind always is that I'm fitting a straight line to a bunch of points. Those points are my registrations and it's a straight line because it's linear. Uh, it, it never it never passes through exactly through each of the points and it smooths a lot away a lot of the details. So if you have a population that's athletes, uh, people who are uh, then retraining the model might be better. Um, or maybe for, training, uh, adding a layer of sort of musculature trained from that data set perhaps yeah, on top. So the, the, the post-corrective different blend shapes that we ship with simple and start, the main like the main thing that they do essentially is the the volume collapse. So the first thing that you see like when these functions are being trained, they're just like sort of pumping air around the joints. Mm -hmm. uh, this is like the biggest thing they do do. Uh, one thing like for, from earlier projects that I don't know if you can talk about them, but we, need, we know that, you know, for low BMI, like anorexia subjects, like when we trained a model for this demography, the model did very well in this demography. Um, so right. you're basically like we're, this simple and star generic models. They are mm -hmm. like average population model. If you're looking for a specific demography, athletes, patients, then it might worth be worth to learn something on top to explain the residuals that are not being explained by, uh, but like, yeah, because there's a lot of averaging that happens, right? So wouldn't this be an argument for moving to, away from these very simplified factored models to a fancier nonlinear neural network or something to predict these displacements? Yeah. So, uh, like, so in the end of the, like, uh, having like, it, uh, it's, it's, so what we've seen today is like simple and st like models like simple are a good base model to build on, to build on, uh, for learning nonlinear displacements, uh, net, like you will always need to start from a good, uh, model that captures the coarse body geometry. So not the high frequency. So you don't, you don't, you shouldn't see any artifacts around the shoulder the neck, uh, if, if you see like, if, if, the, low, if the model, the, um, the low resolution model that captures the coarse body geometry has artifacts, it's, it's going to be very hard to build on top things. Uh, so there's another question here. Have you uh, trained, has anybody trained human pose and shape regressors using STAR and is there any benefit to HMR or spin with STAR over a version with simple? Uh, it's a very good question. So STAR just came out like a year ago. Uh, um, there, there isn't any regressors that we are aware of, but in principle, you should be able to uh, replace STAR, simple with STAR, uh, without like any uh, effort. Um, it's, ex it's exactly the same model. So one benefit would, I don't know if it'd be benefit so much with the regressors, but with uh, Simplify where you're doing an optimization, the derivatives would be much more sparse in doing the optimization, I assume. Oh, yeah. but if you're just optimizing joints, it doesn't matter, I guess. So what I was going to say, like models like HMR, uh, Simplify, they are all based, joint-based. Joint right. yeah. you, don't, you don't need a skin model even. Like in the end, like the objectives and the priors are all on the joints. Yeah. Um, but if you, if anybody has any questions, so actually like how STAR came about, uh, it came about from feedback from people we meet at conferences. Uh, uh, the from, belly problem. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you are a simple user and you have problems or you have like cool ideas and you want to point them out so please do because we are, we're actively looking into building better models newer models that uh, meets the community's needs okay i think that's a great place to stop um sort of